In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The Lord's promise came true, just as the prophet had said. A virgin will have a baby boy and he'll be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Well, good morning, Gateway. It's so good to see you here on Christmas Day. Merry Christmas. It's a great day to be in church today. I want you to stand to your feet. If you're joining us in the room, we'd love to worship together. If you're joining us online, you're very welcome here. But today, right now, let's worship our Saviour, Jesus Christ.
grateful to be in this place and online joining together today as we celebrate the birth of Jesus. I love the words that we read in Isaiah chapter 9. It says, For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called a wonderful counsellor, our mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace will know no end. This morning, that baby that was born years and years ago and the words prophesied about him are still true today. He is Emmanuel, he is God with us, he is our wonderful counsellor, our mighty God. And as we let that sink in, what an opportunity and a, a, mem- a remembrance to worship Him. And our response is to worship Him and to adore Him. That's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to adore Him for who He is. Emmanuel, God with us, our everlasting Father. The same today, yesterday, forever, He will be the same. Emmanuel, God with us, a faithful God.
God, we praise you for all you've done. There is no name on heaven or on earth that can properly describe you, Jesus. You are everlasting Father, you are mighty God. You are Emmanuel here with us, but our words fall short. God, we just come today with our hearts and all we are to say thank you. Thank you that you chose us. Thank you that you saw us and you chose to move into our neighbourhood just to catch even a little glimpse of us, to bring us life and love and salvation. Jesus, we thank you on this Christmas day that you are the greatest gift, you are the greatest treasure we could hope for. And today, Lord, we praise you for who you are. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name and everybody said, Amen. Oh, isn't it so good to be in the house of God worshiping on Christmas Day? Why don't you grab a seat right where you are? My name is Brad. It is my absolute privilege to welcome you into church today, whether you're in the room here or whether you're joining us online. Everyone is welcome at Gateway, particularly today on our Christmas Day service. Hey, kids, has anyone got a present with them in the room today? Are we allowed to bring a present with you? I can see some hands up in the air. I love that tradition in my family. As kids, we got to take one present to church, and I loved it. Very good. Hope you enjoy your service this morning. Hey, um, there's a few things we want to help you do over the next little season. Uh, as a church, we've got a few different services coming up. You can find out all about that on our website, gatewaybaptist.com.au, but we won't be having an in-person service coming up this Sunday, Boxing Day. We're going to be joining one uh, as one church family in many locations, all online on Boxing Day. So don't come up to the doors here in service. At Gateway Online, folks, you know exactly what to do. You'll be online on Sunday. But you can join us at 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock on Boxing Day. And then after that, on the 2nd, we'll start resuming services in person and online, 8, 10, and 6, right across the board in all our campuses. So we'd love to see you there. Hey, there's, this season really is all about the generosity of God and His goodness and kindness to us. And I love that in our Christmas season, through all of our carols, we've actually been uh, celebrating Jesus by our giving and our own generous spirit as well. We've had our beacon of hope appeal all Christmas. Now, we've got to hear all great stories of Rob and Liz. But I know if you're a, bit, a little bit like me, you've enjoyed your carol services, you get to Christmas Day and you're like, oh, I haven't actually done anything about that yet. Mercy and I had a chat on the way in the car this morning about how we're going to be generous and give this year. What we're going to do, you'll see a little card in front of you or you'll see it as a link online in the chat. Uh, we would love to encourage you to give generously today because we can have the opportunity every Christmas to partner with some of our Gateway Beyond workers to see transformation happen in communities. And this year, we're celebrating and, and supporting Robin Liz Lumkis overseas in Myanmar. We have the chance not to just change someone's life with this gift. It'll bless many individuals, but it actually will completely transform communities and bring hope to some of the darkest places in our globe. So if you haven't yet had the chance to give or haven't had the chance to think about how you can be generous this season, today's your day. At Christmas Day, there's no better day to be generous like our Lord Jesus is generous to us. And if Mercy and I, my wife, we're going to go and make sure we fill that card in straight after the service and make sure we've got our gift in to bless the people of Myanmar. But we would love it if you could join us in doing that today. So why don't you turn your eyes to the screen and hear more about Robin and Liz's story. Myanmar, located in Southeast Asia, is one of the really beautiful parts of the world. With its lush green landscape and rice fields, the people are just super welcoming and just very hospitable. And they always got time to sit down and drink tea or, or offer you their best, their food. But with the longest running civil war in the world, and cycles of poverty and violence and fear. People just don't have the opportunities to better their lives or follow their dreams. And it's, there's a real sense of hopelessness and brokenness. And it seems like everything's broken and there's no hope here. We've been working in Shan State in Myanmar for over 20 years now, and it doesn't feel like too long ago that I remember as a 16-year-old sitting at Gateway and God beginning to develop my journey of faith and my call into mission. And eventually, when Liz and I met, we ended up packing up our family and our, our things and moving to Asia and to Northern Thailand and Myanmar. And since then, We've been serving communities and bringing hope to Myanmar, mentoring people and building relationships 
teaching and training and developing Bible study resources, sometimes the first ever in their language. And time and time again, I see when people encounter the life-changing message of Jesus, that their lives are transformed forever and hope begins to break into the darkness. We have a special connection with a young man called Atu, and Atu had a very troubled relationship with his father, who saw him as a burden. So he had to leave his home, and he joined our, our friends in their ministry, and they really took him under their wing. And for the first time in his life, he was encouraged to dream and pursue his dreams. And his dream was to start a business, a donut business. And so we gave him a loan to buy the, the equipment and the ingredients, and he learned how to make donuts. And he'd get up early in the morning, make a batch of donuts, take them to the local school, and they'd sell out every day because they're so good. And within just a few months, he was able to not just pay back the loan, but also start business in more locations and multiply what he was doing. And so I love his story because it shows that when people are encouraged to dream and they're supported in their dreams, that they can, they can achieve great things. And Anatu now is an example to other people around him that they can pursue their dreams because if he could do it, then I can do it. And he's a real beacon of hope for the area, that people can have hope for their futures as well. We've had a dream for a long, long time now to put down more permanent roots in Myanmar and build a community resource and development center where people like Mr. Donut are too, can have opportunities opened up to them that they've never ever had before. A place where people can gather from various religious and ethnic backgrounds to learn skills such as language, music, education skills, business skills, agricultural methods, parenting skills, sewing, and much, much more. A place where people can receive a helping hand and a place where people find hope and Jesus is shared and where youth can gather in the evening safely. A place where people who want to impact their society with social initiatives can be mentored and encouraged. We believe that this center will be a beacon of hope. In 10 years, more than 5,000 people in 50 communities will have their lives transformed forever. You can never underestimate the impact that can happen when one precious life is changed. And the good news is that our Christmas gift this year will establish a community centre that will impact 5,000 people, just like R2, in 50 different communities in Myanmar. I believe this impact will bring new hope to one of the darkest nations in this world. Rob and Liz have been blessing people in this part of the world for 20 years, and as a church, we've been supporting them every step of the way. And this Christmas, we'll partner with them once again to bless more people than ever before in Myanmar. I encourage you to give generously this Christmas and be part of God bringing healing and hope to so many hurting people in this nation. You can jump online, fill in a giving card, or visit the Beacon of Hope stand at any of our services. And together, we will build a community centre that will be a beacon of hope for the people of Myanmar for generations to come. What an awesome privilege it is to be able to give a gift to Myanmar this Christmas. I encourage you to visit our Beacon of Hope stand on your way out this morning. Hey, uh, Jason and Susan are unable to join us today. They're actually uh, in isolation waiting for a negative COVID test. But they do want to uh, wish everyone a merry, happy, happy Christmas, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, all that sort of stuff. But uh, please be praying for them and the family. But uh, hey, welcome. Merry Christmas. It's Christmas Day. We've made it. I hope you're, uh, you've had a fantastic morning uh, online in the, in the room. Who was up early this morning? Who was up early this morning? Okay, a lot of people up early this morning, particularly if you've got young kids. Uh, maybe you're up early even if you don't have young kids. But uh, I'm not sure anybody can beat my morning. I was woken up this morning. Uh, I turned across, across to the clock and it said 2.07 a.m. I'm like, come on. One of our kids has again come into our room, but actually it wasn't because it was Christmas morning. It was because they're afraid of the dark, and this happens every night. 
Every night I have a visitor. We have a visitor into our room because there is a little bit of fear in the dark. I'm not going to embarrass you by putting, getting you to put your hand up to see if you're afraid of the dark this morning. There might be a few adults still. But uh, there is actually a fancy name for being afraid of the dark. It's called nyctophobia. Nyctophobia. It means fear of the dark. And uh, I know it's a day of joy, but I just want to pause here for a minute and, uh, and get some of the kids to help me out this morning. It wouldn't be Christmas at Gateway without some chocolates being thrown into the crowd. Uh, but I would love your help, kids, and your help online as well to help me figure out some other fancy names, what they mean, what they're fears of. Okay, so nyctophobia is a fear of the dark. And I'm going to throw some uh, other words up here. And if you know what th they are a fear of, I'd love you to stick your hand up. And if you're correct, you're going to get some chocolate cheer this morning. So first up, really quite simple one. Most of us have heard of this. Uh, where is it? It's uh, up on the screen. Claustrophobia. What is claustrophobia a fear of? Over here. Yeah. Fear of small enclosed spaces. Well done. Let's give her a round of applause. Good job. I would say that for me, this is my number one fear. I cannot stand being stuck in small enclosed spaces. I went to visit um, uh, that, that mine disaster in Tasmania a few years ago and saw the little cage that they'd been in for however long, and man, I wouldn't have made it out of there, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, all right, next up, next up, uh, this one is a very common fear, arachnophobia, up the back there in the yellow. A fear of spiders, well done, can you catch? Probably more importantly, can I throw? <laughs> Very good, we made it. Yes, arachnophobia is a fear of spiders. 30% of us have a fear of spiders. Uh, I've got spiders in my fridge at the moment, chocolate spiders. I'm not afraid of them at all. I'm looking forward to eating them. But uh, if you have a fear of spiders, you have arachnophobia. All right, next one. Uh, this is a little bit trickier, not as obvious. Orthino, uh, or, I can't even say it, ornithophobia. This is a, a fear that my wife has. Anyone know ornithophobia? What is that a fear of? A fear of birds. Well done. Round of applause and a couple of chocolates. Very good. Very good. Yeah, ornithophobia is a fear of birds. My wife has a fear of birds. I thought it might be fun to give her a Christmas gift as a uh, voucher to the Currumbin Wildlife Sanctuary with all the birds. Uh, no, only kidding. She would hate that. Uh, great. Okay, last one. Oh, last uh, one that you're going to get a chocolate for. Oh, no, two more actually. Aquaphobia. This is probably a fear that not many people have all the way up the back. Give us a big shout. It's a fear of water. That's right. Now I'm going to try and throw this. I need a bit of a run up. All right. Ready? Got your hands up? Ready? Oh. Okay. Close. Well caught. Great catch. I'm not going to make the Olympics for javelin. Let's just say that. But aquaphobia is a fear of water. Not many Queenslanders have a fear of the beach. Some of your kids might be a bit afraid of the shower. I don't know. Okay, last one. Last one. This is kind of obvious. Um, that's what we're talking about today. Angelophobia. Angelophobia. You've probably never heard of it before. Right here, a fear of angels, well done. Merry Christmas, there you go. Angelophobia, angelophobia is actually a real thing and it is a fear of angels. Very bizarre kind of fear to have, but actually if you read the Bible, it's pretty obvious to see that angels have actually inspired fear in a lot of people. You read the Christmas story and there's a lot of angelophobia in the, uh, the story of Jesus' birth. Uh, when Zachariah uh, had visitation from an angel to tell him that his wife would be pregnant, Zechariah ended up being uh, Jesus' uncle, uh, he was terrified. He was terrified. The Bible says that Zechariah was terrified startled and gripped with fear. And then the angel, the first words that the angel said to him were, do not be afraid. There's a lot of angelophobia and always the angels turn up and they say, do not be afraid. Uh, we see it in Mary's story. Mary uh, had a, a visit. Jesus' mother had a visit from an angel telling her what was going to happen uh, in the next little while, that, uh, that she would be with child. And, uh, and, and it terrified her. It, it says she was greatly troubled, that the Bible tells us. But the angel said, do not be afraid. 
We even see it with Joseph, Mary's fiance, when an angel shows up to him in a dream and tells him that, uh, that Mary is going to have a child and that child will be the son of God. He's freaking out. The, the Bible says he's terrified. But once again, the angel says, what does it say? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. These angels were probably terrifying to people, people who hadn't ever seen a movie or special effects or even basic art just materializing out of nowhere. They must have been incredibly afraid that the Bible says, do not, or the angels say, do not be afraid. It's exactly the same thing that happened with the shepherds in the fields at night. And Mary, that very first Christmas, she gave birth to Jesus and lay him in a manger, wrapped him in cloths, laid him to rest. And then then God chose to share with the world the good news. But he didn't choose to do it through a press conference or through the rulers of the, the, the day. He chose to reveal his truth, his news to humble shepherds in the field. This is what Luke tells us in chapter two. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory shone around them and they were terrified. This angel just appeared and they were terrified. An angel turned up, they were scared stiff, they were, they were petrified. But what do you think the angel said to them? Can you say it? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. The angel said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. In that moment, as the angels appeared to the shepherds, they they, they were full of fear as they saw this angel. But the angel says, do not be afraid. I bring you great news of joy. And if that wasn't enough, as the angel to kind of appears to the shepherds, all of a sudden, in that moment, the heavenly host appears and a whole choir of heavenly creatures start singing glory and praise to God. They say glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. The whole of heaven erupts. These poor shepherds, absolutely scared witless, but there is great joy There is peace on earth to all mankind. And so the shepherds, they huddled together in fear, but after the the angels disappeared, they hurried into the town and they saw Mary and Joseph and the baby in the manger. And after they saw the baby, they said, they returned back to their fields and they glorified and praised God for all the things that they had heard and seen which was just as they had been told. All the promises of the angel were revealed in Jesus, this baby in a manger. And the shepherds were filled with peace and joy. These shepherds had been full of fear in the fields. But as they drew near to Jesus, they became full of peace and joy. And it wasn't just about what Jesus' birth meant in that moment. This was Jesus, the the promised Messiah, the one who would come to save his people. This Jesus would grow up to be a profound teacher and a miracle worker, showing people how to enter into the kingdom of God. And this Jesus, 30 years, 30 odd years later, would give his life as a sacrifice to us, living a perfect life, a spotless, blameless life, He would take on the sins of the world on the cross, dying in our place, taking the punishment for our sins so that whoever trusts in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The birth of this baby was certainly good news of great joy to all the people. And the shepherds, they had a front row seat. They saw it all firsthand. They were the ones who first encountered Jesus Emmanuel, God with us. And they were filled with praise and joy. See, even though the shepherds had been full of fear in the fields, their fears faded 
when they drew near to the Prince of Peace. And that's true for us as well. Our fears fade when we draw near to the Prince of Peace. We've experienced another challenging year, an incredibly challenging year. In fact, I would say that 2021 was harder than 2020. Just when we thought that we'd all be off with a fresh start in 2021, it's been a real challenge. And as we conclude this year and head into another, again, we're stepping in to uncharted territory. There's lots of questions. There's lots of so much uncertainty. There's so many things that we just don't know how it's going to all turn out. There's a lot of fear. We don't know what's going to happen. And many of us are living in these fields of fear where joy and peace are being robbed by worry and anxiety. And it seems that that peace is, is more rare than ever before. It's more elusive in this season than ever before. Sometimes I think we we think that that peace is the absence of something. It's the absence of anxiety. It's the absence of worry. If I can just get rid of that that problem, if I can just uh, submit that that thing for that deadline, if I can just get rid of that stress, then I'll be okay. I'll find some peace. But the reality is we can't find true peace on our own. When we solve one problem, three more pop up. Uh, When we go on holiday, we're we're going to be coming back to work at some point. There there are just too many factors beyond our control, too many things that are outside our realm of power. We can't find true, lasting peace in our own ability, simply by removing or eliminating all our stresses and our worries. See, peace isn't the absence of of something. It's not the absence of anxiety or the absence of worry. Peace is not the absence of something. Peace is found through the presence of someone. And Christmas reminds us of God's invitation to draw near to Him, to experience true peace through God's Son, Jesus, the Prince of Peace. See, the the angels declared uh, Jesus' coming, that it brought great joy to all people. They proclaimed that his arrival established peace for humankind. And just like those shepherds that first Christmas night, we are all invited to draw near to Jesus, to take hold of the peace and the joy that he offers. Our fears fade when we draw near to the Prince of Peace, because true peace is found in his presence. Listen to what God says through the Apostle Paul. Paul was one of the earliest Christian leaders. He set up a bunch of churches around the place, and then he wrote letters to them, encouraging them and telling them how to live this this life following Jesus. And when Paul wrote a letter to the church at Philippi, he said this. He said, the Lord is near. The Lord is close. The Lord is not far away. He's easily found. This month we've been exploring the Christmas treasure, this parable that the kingdom of God is like treasure found in a field. Well, when a man came across it, he sold everything that he owned in order to buy that field and obtain that treasure. The Lord is near. He is easily found. He is a treasure for us. Paul is saying, draw near to God because the Lord is near. And then he goes on. He says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, in by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Paul is echoing the angels that visited the shepherds. And he's saying that God promises his peace to us. And the promise of that peace is found in the presence of Jesus. The promise of that peace is found in the presence of Jesus. And Paul encourages us to to find that peace. We, We find that peace when we come near to God, when we give thanks to Him, and when we ask Him to to figure out the things in our life. Paul says that when we give thanks to God in all circumstances, or when we bring our requests, our petitions to Him, we will draw near to Him and experience His peace. I remember five Christmases ago, we were living overseas, my wife and I and our kids, and Lauren was pregnant with our third child. And on Christmas Eve, 20 
2017, 2016, whichever year it was, five years ago, 2016. Uh, Christmas Eve, she was actually admitted to the emergency department with some complications with, with her pregnancy. And it was a crazy day. Over there, uh, they celebrated Christmas, Christmas Eve. And so we, uh, we were all getting ready for a massive Christmas feast. We had a cast of thousands coming over to our house that night. And we had a lot of plans, but then all of our plans got upended as we ended in the emergency department, just waiting, being uncertain, just getting nervous. I remember there sitting in the, the, uh, the, the chair, my foot was kind of bouncing up and down, like a nervous tick going all, all, all over. And I remember beginning to worry. I mean, remember beginning to think, what's going to happen with Lauren? What's going to happen with our unborn child? And when I stopped thinking about that, I thought, well, what about all of our guests back at home? Uh, what's going to happen with the food in the oven? What's going to happen with all the plans that we had? What's even going to happen about getting to church and celebrating the real meaning of Christmas? As I circled all of those thoughts and I came back to Lauren and the unborn child within her, I was reminded of the true meaning of Christmas, the birth of Jesus. And I remember in that emergency department room, just pausing and giving thanks to God giving thanks to him for the gift of his son, giving thanks to him for the opportunity to put my trust in Jesus and having an eternal future because I have put my trust in him, giving thanks for the incredible woman who decided, yes, I would like to be your wife, the amazing kids that he had blessed us with already, the fact that we had friends and family coming over for Christmas, giving thanks for all the things that he had blessed us with. And then I remember saying, God, I'm so thankful, but right now I need your help. Would you help us through this? Would you help us navigate this season together? And I remember in that emergency room, there was just a, an overwhelming sense of peace and clarity that came in that moment. As I drew near to God with thankfulness, with petitions, this peace came over me. And there was a real clarity around what to do next. Shortly, the, uh, the doctor came and took Laurie away for some tests and we chatted about how we could best care for her and best care for our guests. And by the end of the night, somehow it was a Christmas miracle. We'd managed to feed everybody at home. The food wasn't burnt. We got Lauren back home and into her bed for a couple of weeks bed rest. And we even managed to take all of our guests out to church to celebrate at the service Christmas Day, Christmas Eve. It was a Christmas miracle. But because of that, that, that um, thankfulness and that petition, there was a significant peace. And my prayer today is that you would find that same peace. Or whatever you're walking through this Christmas, that you would draw near to Jesus through thanksgiving and prayer. See, he knows that our fears fade when we draw near to the Prince of Peace. Because true peace is found in his presence. Today, the fears and anxieties that you might be walking through are not the same as the ones we were throwing lollies out about before. You're not too worried maybe about claustrophobia or, or arachnophobia. There's other more pressing things. You know, you might be worried about what, uh, what your future job or career even looks like in the next little season. You might be uh, concerned, worried about, uh, about where we're at economically and, and, and how, how uh, the, the finances, the family finances are gonna work for you. Maybe you're worried about your own health or the health of those ones who are close to you, those loved ones close to you. This Christmas, Jesus wants to replace those fears and anxieties with his peace. I want to encourage you to treasure the peace that Jesus promises through his birth. Let's draw near to him. Watch our fears fade as we give thanks and bring our requests to God and we experience that peace. This Christmas, I want to invite you to give thanks to God, to bring your requests to Him in prayer, and to discover the peace that Jesus brings. To help us do that today, we're going to go through a little bit of an activity, and uh, uh, I want to invite you, you probably would have got a, a, a wristband as you came in on your way in. If you're online, I'm going to share with you how you're going to engage with this in a minute. But as you came in today, you probably got a wristband and a pen. Maybe you didn't get a pen. If you don't have a pen, just shoot your hand up. One of our team would love to get a pen to you. But I'm going to encourage you to do something with this pen and this wristband. I want to encourage you to, uh, to, to write a, a prayer of thanks, to look back on this season that we've gone through, uh, this last uh, year that we've journeyed, and, and thank God for the blessings that he's poured out. 
Thank Him for the things you are grateful for, for all the good things. You might just want to write a word, you might have room for a sentence, but write a prayer of thanks. But at the same time, I also want to encourage you to look to the future and just bring to Him the things that you might be uh, needing His answers to prayer on, the things that you want to pray and petition Him for, the things that as you look to the future, the things that might be at the moment even giving you worry, giving you anxiety. Let's bring them to Jesus. Let's bring our prayers to Him today. If you're online, I want to encourage you to do that in the chat. Just, answer, just write your, uh, your prayer in the chat. What is one thing that you're thankful for? What is one thing that you're praying for? And as we do that, our team are going to play. And, and if, once you finish writing, I want to encourage you just to hold on to this wristband. Don't, don't detach it or anything like that. Just hold on to it. Pray your own prayer of thanksgiving. Pray your own prayer of petition. And allow the peace of God to transcend your understanding and to dwell in your mind and your heart. has come through the Saviour of the world. And as you've been praying and reflecting on things that you're grateful for and things that you're praying for, uh, there's real power when we pray together. And uh, the, the Lord listens to the prayers of the saints. And so I'm gonna encourage us all to link our prayers together. And we're gonna pray together in a moment. But I wanna invite you right now, once you've finished writing and reflecting on your own prayer, to stand. And why don't you join your prayer to others in the room? Maybe join with your family, join with uh, those in your row, maybe uh, join and, uh, and bring the, the, um, 
the chains, this prayer chain that we're going to make, bring it towards the center of the church. Some of our team are going to facilitate just connecting those, uh, those uh, wristbands together. Because God listens to the prayers of His people. And we're going to pray all together. So I encourage you, why don't we all stand? The team are going to lead us in another song. Uh, but uh, join your wristband, join your prayer to those of your family, those others in your row, and bring the, the, the chain towards the center of the church. And our team will start to uh, put this chain together for us this morning. Let's sing, O Holy Night. Precious 
our prayers join together as we, as we draw near to the one, the Prince of Peace, this Christmas. I would love to, you, uh, love to invite you to stretch out your hand. Let's pray together for all of the, the thankfulness, all the things we're grateful for and all the things that we're bringing to God in the future. Would you join with me? Father God, this Christmas morning, we wanna say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for sending us your son, Jesus. We thank you for the incredible gift that he is to all mankind. Lord, we thank you for the promise that Jesus gives us of peace in this world and an eternal future in the next. Jesus, I, I thank you for all of those here who have put their trust in you. And I pray, Lord God, for your blessings on them. Lord, we wanna thank you for this year. Lord, whilst it's been an incredibly challenging year, there have been good things. And Lord, all the good things that are represented here, things like family, things like faith, things like, uh, like future, Lord God, we thank you for the blessings you've poured out on our lives. But Lord, at this uncertain moment in future in, in, the, in our history as well, Lord, and we wanna bring you our prayers and our requests for the next season. God, we know that you will go with us. We know that you'll draw near. But Jesus, we pray, Lord God, that you would give us every good gift that we need to be able to navigate it through. God, would you help us to realise that we cannot control uh, our worries and our anxieties all on our own. God, that we need you to bring peace to us. Jesus, we pray for the future. We pray for careers. We pray for health. We pray for finances. Lord God, we pray your blessings on your people. Jesus, that we would know your presence and your power in our lives at the end of this year and into next. We thank you, Jesus, and we lift these prayers up to you as your church and all God's people said, amen, amen. Hey, it's, uh, it's a joyful morning. Why don't we uh, finish our time together by singing joy to the world, celebrating that Jesus has come. And uh, let's lift our voices and sing this carol together. Joy to the world.
Hey, Merry Christmas, guys. Thanks so much for joining us today. I pray that the rest of today is full of joy and peace as you celebrate with friends and family. Don't forget, an online service only tomorrow at 8 and 10. We look forward to seeing you back here live in the room on the new, uh, 2nd of January. Happy New Year and all that stuff. But Merry Christmas today. God bless you. Have a good one. See you around.